It is Wednesday and we're gonna drink more wine. Um, I always love saying it's Wednesday because very rarely is it actually Wednesday when I say that. Uh, today we are drinking a wine that I'm very excited to try. It is this wine which is Sukolemanski. I probably butchered that. Check the, uh, it, you know, the title of this video for how it's spelt. But this wine is Ukrainian. And I have honestly never had a Ukrainian wine before. Um, hmm, this cork is a little bit dry. I'm unbottling it live, as we do now. Um, so I'm a little bit worried, but, uh, you know, just because it... Hmm. Okay, bottom of the cork is... So when you open a bottle of wine, uh, always double check how the cork looks. It smells like wine. Um, because that gives you a really good indication whether your wine is gone bad. So if you have a wine sitting upright for too long, um, the cork can air out and let oxygen in, which will then ruin your wine. And we had that with, I forget exactly what kind of one that was, but you know that uh, red wine that I had just before Christmas, um, where it got too old? So it, it, it's a similar kind of thing, that's what it leads to it. And if a wine gets really oxygenated, it just is totally ruined and you can't drink it. Well, I mean, you could, but it won't taste good. So, also, don't look at my hair. It's, uh, I woke up this morning, I had an assessment at work, and, uh, I was like, I'm not doing my hair today, I'm just putting it back. Uh, and I hairsprayed it for some reason. So I have this wonderful back look that is falling apart, but oh well. So, um, I believe this is a white wine due to the coloring and also just the first iterations of the smell. Ooh, okay, so this is a lighter, not super deep, but also it, you can see there's that definite uh, color. It's not the lightest, not the darkest that I've ever seen. Um, let's cork that bottle back up. I'm going to stick it back in the fridge. Um, so that color already is very interesting. And now there were some smells uh, when I opened it up. So I'm really excited to see what this smells like. Um, as I put the bottle away and I'm like, I want to read it more. Um, so let's see if the bottle gives us any clues. So, um, okay, so it says, um, grapes are grown in the Black Sea region of the Danubian Bessarabia, southwestern part of the Odessa region, manual harvesting only. Uh, it's fruity with notes of white plum, pear, and flowers, light notes of hazelnut. And then it's saying that it has light notes of lime, lychee, and muscat with a pleasant finish. Um, okay, and this is... The grape in it is the Sokolmansky Bilyi. So this is, um, I'll double check afterwards, but it seems like there's, it, this is not like a Sauvignon Blanc or a, a Chardonnay. This is only the Sokolmansky, Sokolmansky Bilyi grape, which could also be a local name for, um, one of the water known varietals. I don't know. Um, so it's 13% alcohol. So let's, let's drink. Well, actually, let's taste first. So we got the flavor. I'm going to swirl this around. So right off the bat, I get a lot of herbaceousness. I got a lot of farmyard. I get, there's a kind of a mushroomy kind of. Thank you. 
it doesn't smell off, but it smells off. And I say that just because um, when you're learning wine, there are very distinct smells that you get. Um, that sometimes when you go to international producers, when you go to wine regions that you're not necessarily familiar with, you get different smells. You get different, um, you know, things on the palate. So this one, I know I use the word medicinal a lot, but it has that, I don't want to say spiciness, but it has a, uh, a bite to it. It has a, a kind of, I'm, I'm I will say the white plum pear and flowers, maybe flowers I get, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of interesting things with this, definitely. Although there is a sense of tropicalness, there's that sense of, I kind of, I wouldn't say lychee, but I get where someone could go with that. The hazelnut, I can, once again, can kind of, I wouldn't say hazelnut. Um, like, I'm not getting a really nutty scent, for, on the nose at least. But let's taste it, let's see what it's like. So it's got this, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's got like this almost tannic, acidic feel with your cheeks. That's one thing I noticed really early on. And I, yeah, I don't know who did this description of the taste being lime lychee muscat. I don't get any lime, I don't get any lychee. I get, um, not quite that tropical. Um, and on the back here, so it's saying, you know, it's at the same latitude as Bordeaux and Piedmont, which you probably can't see that. Um, it, you know, it's all at the 45th parallel, which is cool. I, I fully believe that. Um, but, you know, you think of the Piedmont, you think of uh, Bordeaux. Uh, first off, I would never go to Bordeaux and think of tropical white fruit. And even if this is by the Black Sea, which could um, give it that warmer effect from the water, I wouldn't jump to the idea that it's gonna have tropical. Um, I definitely think that there is some, um, there's some warm citrus. And I say warm because I, it, it reminds me of almost like a, While it's, while it's acidic in the f mouth, it doesn't taste acidic. Like, it doesn't taste like a green apple or something like that. What I do get is, <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, what I do get from it is like a, a pear type. Uh, you know, something like a, where's my, I have my tasting guide that I like using every now and then somewhere. Oh, I think it's in the other cupboard. That's not important. Don't mind me opening the cupboards. But it, it's... Yeah, it's got a lot of weird... I don't want to say weird. It's got more of an acidic... Um, I know I just said it doesn't taste acidic. It doesn't taste like acidic fruit. It doesn't taste like a green apple. But it does have an inherent acidity to it. And I think, this is just me hypothesizing it, it could be totally wrong, but typically wine in a region goes well with the food from that region. Just as a 
standard. If you're ever at an Italian restaurant and you don't want to get, get an Italian wine to drink with it because chances are it'll go a little bit better than, you know, just getting a French wine. I feel like if I had this wine with Ukrainian food, it would be the bomb, and I love Ukrainian food. Um, that being said, is this my favorite wine that I've ever had? No, I'll be honest, it is not. I mean, I I like my Pinot Grigio, I like, um, and I, th I think it's also partially the, the conditioning of the wine that I'm used to, but But speaking objectively, yeah, I'm, I'm, this wine's, there's a lot of taste and I think I need to, you know, do some more research and try this again later on. Um, this wine is definitely not like something you've had before. It is, um, like, I don't even know what... Like, I, I don't want to do it to the service of saying it's like a Chardonnay, it's like a Sauvignon Blanc, it's like a Pinot Grigio, because honestly, um, I, I think it would be doing a disservice to try to compare it to a wine that is not. Um, I think it is more of a bolder flavor. I, I think there's some aging to this. I mean, I just bought it this year, and it's from 2019. Um, so I definitely think that there's been some aging. There's some of that... Um, like the mushroom, the, the forest floor, that makes me think that it did some bottle aging before. That being said, um, I would recommend this wine if you are a kind of person that is looking to try new wine. If you're looking for an adventure, if you know someone that's like, oh, I love all wine, and you're looking for a fun gift, get them a bottle of Ukrainian wine, because chances are uh, they haven't had it before. Ukraine is um, really poised to explode on the world market just because it has some great climate zones. It has some great um, ability to make some amazing wines, and they're going to grow into that. Um, Critically, does this wine, is this wine complex? I would, it, 0. 0.5, 50% there. Uh, you know, it's it's not simple. It does have some levels to it, but it's also not overly complex. It doesn't really grow with you. Um, it doesn't really last. The flavors don't really last. It's not, uh, taste-wise, it's super intense. Smell-wise, uh you know, medium, medium plus intensity, I would say. Um, uh, maybe pronounced intensity on the nose. Like, it is, it, it's a bold wine. It's Ukrainian. I mean, let's be honest. We all know Ukrainians. <laughs> They're not a quiet people. Um, they, they are bold. They are out there. And this wine is like that, um, as it should be. It. And as much as, got a little bit of cork, and as much as it's not a taste that we're used to in Western markets, this sort of wine I can definitely see people being attracted to because it almost, I would say if you do like, like a Chardonnay and you're looking for something in that same kind of realm, I think you could be attracted to this. Um, it's almost, it, it's... Personally, that's where I'd put it. Um, like I was saying, critically, it's not a terrible wine. Um, is it the best wine that I think has ever been made? No. Um, would I put it on the top of the list of all the wines that I've tasted in this channel? No. Um, but overall, it's a fun wine. It's a good wine. It's very good. I don't know. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. You know, um, overall, and I think part of it is just my 
it's presenting a flavor profile which I'm not really familiar with. And so having all this new stuff exposed at one point, it's just like, oh God, what's happening? Um, but it is a lot of fun. Um, so I highly recommend it, if nothing else, just to be adventurous. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, if this is the kind of wine though that Ukraine is going to make, it's great. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they make. And once, and I know I'm recording this a bit in the future, um, and once the, you know, Russian occupation there is, it has ended, I'm excited to see what Ukraine, uh, will do future. And I mean, I'm, hopefully they're still making wine now. Wine strengthens the troops and gives us freedom. I just made up that quote now and that's totally inaccurate. Fighting gives you freedom usually. But I digress. I'm just really excited for this wine. And as always, we will support Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, comment below to see what you'd like next. And if you know of any other Ukrainian wines other than... I, I don't know what kind this is. I know it has the winery, but it's like in a... Cursive Cyrillic, I think. Karo... I don't know. I don't speak Cyrillic. Or I can't read Cyrillic. Um, or Ukrainian. Um, so if you know of any other Ukrainian wine, please let me know. I would love to have it. Taste it and get more experienced with it. So, anyways, I will see you next week. Wine Wednesday. It'll be fun. I forgot to put that back in the fridge. Ugh. Oh well. Good wine. Wow, this is a long episode.